Right, welcome to this Tactica series for Space Wolves. And I've been reworking the Space Wolves army, uh, trying to bring it over from 7th edition uh, and then trying to make it viable for 8th edition. I've been using the models that I have, but I've uh, been seeing the need to revamp the list. I've got some new models on the way and a brand new list proposed that's over on the Plus channel. Uh, but here I'm going to do a tactical series here on YouTube. I'm going to cover some of the main units that I hope to feature in my new list. Uh, in this episode, it's Blood Claws, so one of the main troops choices to take for your Space Wolves uh, list or your army. So uh, we'll go, we'll cover, we'll take a look at the models first of all uh, and then we'll discuss like unit, unit builds, upgrades, war gear, tactics, may roll up some dice as well uh, later on just to illustrate how to use this infantry unit which, which uh, will feature quite prominently actually in my new Space Wolves list. A great looking unit as well. Um, so we'll, it is a showcase video as well so it's a chance for you to see the miniatures up close as well. I think Space Wolves, some of the uh, the best looking Space Marines that are out there just with the, all the uh, Space Wolves star upgrade parts on them. I think they just look great. Beautiful colour scheme as well. So I'll bring 10 of them in you to take a look at here and I'll zoom in here as well so these have actually been painted up by Siege Studios but I'll just zoom in here and we'll get a closer look so there they are I just think they look great the, the Space Wolves actual color is fantastic and then the red and the the yellow there I just think is an amazing color just a great combination and all the gold that's been picked out so Siege Studios have painted these for me on commission so you get an idea of the quality of their work, but uh, a real good job. Brilliant. So Space Wolves theme really is more of an aggressive Space Marine chapter. So if you're looking to get an army that's Space Marines, but more on a sort of an aggressive slant, then definitely Space Wolves is an army to consider. But look what you can get here, all the upgrades and bits uh, that make these stand apart from regular Space Marines. So I just think they look great and the bolt pistol chainsaw is always a great looking combination look at this double sided one here very cool so we'll run through a number of these yeah but uh, really happy with the job that Siege Studios have done I asked them to copy my basing colour scheme which they copied from the video uh, that's on the channel here and they've matched that so it matches in my other armies nicely and that'll be useful if I decide to add a few more units and try and uh, match them up then the basings uh, all nicely matching what I already have but uh, look at these they're great all the extra blades and things hanging down good job and there's two more I've got about 30 35 of these painted up so I've got a good number of them but there they are we'll uh, zoom out now we'll take a look at the rules uh, for these blood claws so, uh, my, space wolves are, my Space Wolf army I'm planning to have is quite a heavy sort of infantry based army. So these are going to play quite a crucial role. And on their 32mm bases and with all their weapons brandished, they, they're quite a presence on the ball. Ten of them, uh, they bulk out quite nicely and I, I think they're absolutely fantastic. So visually, uh, one of my favourite units actually, just standard infantry but they just look great uh, for Space Wolves. I think they're cheap enough and some pretty good rules for them. So, uh, infantry choice. You've got nice uh, diversity with uh, the Space Wolves. You can go for Blood Claws, which is more of your close combat, more attacks based infantry choice. And you've got your Great Hunters, which is more your firepower. So, you've got the two balancing each other out quite nicely, which is great. So you've got some excellent options. But uh, Blood Claws here. They come in at, a lot of people don't rate the standard marines now, but they're cheap enough uh, to field on the battlefield here. Blood Claws, 13 points. Uh, so your standard Space Marine stat line, you're going to get 10 of them, including the Blood Claw pack leader who just gets an extra attack. His leadership's no better, but just an extra attack there. Uh, and all of that for 130 points, which is cheap. And I think the key for these... Uh, which I'll talk about the reason why later on is to keep them cheap to a degree. You're so, it's sort of a balance between the two. Um, so you can take, you get a standard unit of four or five, then you can take five more or up to ten more. So you can have uh, 15 of them 
in total. You can also include either a Wolfguard pack leader or a Wolfguard Terminator pack leader. So, uh, and what I've missed here previously is you still keep your Blood Claw pack leader. It's like the Sergeant of the Squad, you still keep him. And then you add in another model, uh, which is the Wolfguard pack leader or uh, a Wolfguard Terminator pack leader. And that's one of the tactics I've been switching to, uh, is to add a Terminator model into the unit. Now, we'll come back to that structure in just a moment. The Blood Claws, uh, the Pack Leader, Wolfguard Pack Leader, all under Chainsaw, Bolt Pistol, Frag and Crack Grenades, your standard sort of Space Marine uh, grenades and close combat equipment. And then the Terminator is armed with Power Sword and Storm Bolter. Now, uh, so standard Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw, the Bolt, uh, the Chainsaw Sword gets an extra attack. So with that combo, Chainsaw, Bolt Pistol, you're on two attacks each for these. So unit of 10, uh, with just the standard Blood Claw Pack Leader, it's 21 attacks. Which is decent enough, you're going to be at Strength 4. Uh, and then in response, you're going to be Toughness 4 and a 3-up save. So I think that's solid enough. And it's going to take a fair bit of effort to, to wipe the unit out. So uh, the special rules here, Berserk Charge, and I think this is what makes these really good. That's why I really... I'm trying to build a knife, it's going to go aggressively straight at the opponent, loads of attacks, and this is where these come in and can be really helpful. Berserk Charge, now turning which they make a successful charge, you can have one additional attack in the fight phase, all models in this unit. So, uh, 21 attacks, 31 attacks from unit of 10. So a lot of attacks, and the great thing about Space Rules on the charge, it's either on the charge, or if they receive a charge, they'll be on plus one to the hit rolls, so it really is gearing these and encouraging you to go down the route of close combat attacks. So, you know, 31 attacks on the charge at twos to hit is excellent. It really is good. So, their primary role, just with chain swords and keeping them cheap, is to clear away uh, hordes and screens away, which is you know, a common problem now to try and deal with in 8th edition. So, uh, you know, playing against orcs, there's a screen of orc boys in the way. You plunge these into the orc boys and they should overwhelm them, no problem on the charge. Deadly enough. Uh, great thing about keeping them cheap is if they are destroyed and wiped out, it's no big deal if they're gone. Uh, so you've got other rules here. Headstrong, unless this unit contains a Wolfguard pack leader or Wolfguard Terminator pack leader, uh, or is within six inches of a friendly Wolfguard, it must declare a charge in its charge phase if it is possible to do so. So, this is one of the reasons you could sort of... There's times in the game, it's happened already, there's times in the game where you don't want to charge for whatever reason. You're trying to hide these behind somewhere or there's cover or some other tactical need. Uh, you have to charge unless you've got some uh, Wolfguard pack leader or Wolfguard Terminator pack leader to try and keep them under control. So, or a Wolfguard unit within six inches. So that's one of the reasons uh, why I've been trying to incorporate uh, a Wolfguard Terminator into each of my units. Uh, multiple reasons for it, that's one of the reasons, but uh, the other reasons is that it looks brilliant. <laughs> it really does look great to have a Terminator model buried inside that unit. I just, just love the whole concept of it. I think it's fantastic. It just looks so cool to have a, a Terminator buried inside the unit. The other great thing is you can use the cheaper models to shield and protect the Terminator. Um, so he'll be the last one to die at. So I, I had standard, in the previous list, I had five uh, Terminators in a squad, and then when they landed, or when the opponent could see them, they were just shot at, because that's the unit Terminators, that's where I've invested the points. But now, I've split my unit Terminators up, and I've dotted one into each of the units of these, and also I've put one in my Grey Hunter squad as well, and it means the opponent's got to try and chew for all of these regular Marines to try and get through to him. Uh, there's all sorts of combinations you can go for. Uh, I would say if these are geared towards close combat, you wouldn't really want a shooty version. I don't think so, because you're going to be advancing a lot of the time. Uh, and the other thing is the... Oh no, the Terminator's okay. His ballistic skill is still 3+. plus. Uh, for Blood Claws it's 4+. plus. So standard Blood Claws is not really worth investing in too much firepower. Um, but I, I'd imagine my squad's going to be advancing a fair bit, so you know firepower's going to be wasted a bit. So I'd, I'd rather go for close combat ability uh, with these. The other great thing is uh, the Wolfguard 
this unit, yeah, it affects the whole unit, it's going to get an extra attack. So it's actually better than the regular Terminator unit because inside one of these units it's going to get the extra attack. So two attacks for him, uh, plus one attack on the charge, uh, and then I take the Wolf Claws or Lightning Claws and that's going to grant another attack as well, uh, at, you know, twos to hit, that's a pretty good choice in there. The other way to use this Terminator is to try and protect these guys. So, you know, you've got to reroll on standby. What you can do is a couple of shots come in, a few slugger shots from some Orc boys, and say there's one or two saves to make, which, you know, there's a fair chance it might bring down one of your Marines. Instead, you can tank it on him uh, on a two up save, a reroll on standby, and they should be able to shrug off that damage. So, the Terminator can also help to protect the regular, mean, regular Marines when it's a small amount of firepower coming through. You've got to be careful, though. You don't let too much firepower go onto the Terminator, otherwise you'll lose him, or he'll take a wound. If he takes a wound, you have to allocate uh, damage and wounds uh, for any further shooting that comes through. So you know, it's about trying to get that right, that balance. If it's the odd shot coming through, definitely tank it on the Terminator, but anything more than that, and definitely anything with an AP minus, uh, I don't think I would take the risk. You could go Terminator with a Storm Shield, but it's an expensive enough model. Yes, you can tank the hits, but once it dies, you know it's, a, it's, it's cost you a fair bit in points. So I'd rather try and preserve and keep these alive uh, as much as possible, because then that, that the, you know your points invested in dec decent close combat ability are kept alive, whilst it's the cheaper Marines. Uh, that I brought down. So that's the kind of idea, and it just I think it looks amazing as well. So I, I've actually kept my Terminator squad in my list, but I've buried them, split them all up and buried them in amongst my infantry squads. And so I think it's a much stronger way of keeping them alive. Uh, he's going to have a 5 plus 7 save anyway for the, uh, the Wolfguard Terminator. It's going to increase your leadership as well to 8 instead of 7. That's a, uh, actually a, a, a real good help as well. Um, some have said, well, why not go for smaller units? So you can go for units of five, and maybe add a Terminator in there or not, whatever you want to do. Smaller units, that may help out of morale, and add a bit more flexibility. You can go for things like double battalions and brigades and things as well. So that's definitely an option to consider. Downside is your stratagems perhaps more wasted on smaller units, but... I can see the benefit in doing it because a lot of the stratagems don't really. I think it's quite rare you're going to play any stratagems on these because the Space Wolf ones for infantry don't seem particularly good. So that may be an idea to split them down into smaller squads or even squads of sort of eight or so in size. Still quite a decent um, number there. But um, whatever size there, it's all flexible and. It, uh, you can up up and down the points depending on your uh, or up and down the, the size of the unit depending on what points you have left. So you know you're a few points short uh, and you need to find some points somewhere. You can add and take away some of these, or if you've got 20 points spare or 30 points spare, you can add a few into the squad. So that's where you can play around with your points and adjust the sizes of these depending on what else is in your list. So. Uh, there's options in here. You can go for one blood claw and replace his chainsaw with item from the special weapons. Um, and then if you've got 15 models, you can go for uh, an additional blood claw can do that. So things like uh, chain swords and uh, power swords and so on. But the, the model's only going to have an, one attack. And, you know, two attacks on a charge. I don't think it's worth investing the points in a model with so few attacks. So I wouldn't bother with that. Uh, one block, blood claw may replace his bolt pistol with a plasma pistol. You could do, but the ballistic skill is 4+. Plus. I think it's wasted on that model, so I wouldn't bother with that either. Just all saving points. You can invest those points in, in models of a higher calibre to do that. Uh, I think it's more worth putting the points into the, the Terminator here. You know, the last one to die, uh, the extra attack, better leadership. Uh, you know, I, I invest the points into him instead of sort of a more of a minor model. Uh, the Wolfguard pack leaders got access to melee weapons, combi weapons, and so on. Again, with the combi weapons, ballistic skill 4+. Plus. E no, he's okay. 3+. Plus. So you could bury a bit of shooting in there, but as I said earlier on, I think I'm going to be advancing and using these for close combat. So I want to put the emphasis onto that uh, for those. So, 
Uh, there's a few stratagems. I think something that's more solid than stratagems is, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll cover, because I, people have asked to try and cover as much as possible in these videos just to help you out. So the first thing I'd say is to go for uh, your Wolf Lords here, whichever one you decide to go for, but it's reroll hit rolls of one for friendly space wolves units within six. So that's going to help them out in close combat. If you can get some kind of uh, Wolf Lord on a Thunder Wolf or in Terminator armor, uh, standard Wolf Lord, or even Crom, who is the unit that I'm going to have, uh, Jarl of Fenris, reroll hit rolls of one. It's just going to make your close combat ability very, very solid. Twos to hit rerolling ones. You have loads of attacks, you're just going to plaster the opponent with loads of, attack, loads of attacks, so um, de we definitely worth having a character nearby. And that's the other main strategy for these. I'd, I don't want to invest too much in these units, a little bit to make them a bit more potent in combat and a bit more durable, but the main purpose for these is to clear hordes and then also uh, to protect characters. So I put my characters behind, the opponent has to chew through all of this in order to get through to those. So you you know, you can have Crom nearby, he's granting them their bonus of rerolling ones, and then they're also doing their job of protecting the character. And you can even, you know, if there's, you're worried about deep strikers and so on coming down, you can even physically lap these around your character and move around the table like that. So you've got your, uh, your character here, and then you've got your unit protecting them. And then leave a little corridor, so you can march around something like this, like so, because then uh, the opponent charges in, and then with space tools the characters get a six inch heroic intervention, so your character can come flying out of the squad and get stuck into <laughs> stuck into close combat. So you know, characters and blood claws just helping each other out, both benefiting each other. I think is a, a vital way to play these, so something like that. And even if he's in that situation, a six inch uh, heroic intervention, even if he has to go all the way around, he can still make it, so it's pretty impressive there for the Space Wolves. Uh, the other great thing to do, so this is a standard Wolf Lord here, uh, just a you know, standard character, it could be a Rune Priest or something like that. Uh, another great option is to go for See, stratagems, they're going to cost you command points every time. It's better to take something that's you don't have to pay for. The Wolf and Stone Relic. Give it to one of your characters, unnamed characters. You can make one additional attack for models in Space Wolf. Infantry by crew cavalry units are in three inches, so you keep the character tight and nearby. But they're going to be on uh, one attack, two attacks with Chainsword, uh, three attacks on the charge, four attacks. So that's going to be 41 attacks coming from a sort of a standard unit at twos to hit rerolling ones, it's incredible. They'll clear any horde that there is out there and mash for it, no problem at all. So the Wolf and Stone, uh, that's when, uh, bear, when they make their attacks in the fight phase. So it's, it's, whether you charge or not, it's all the time. Fantastic, the Wolf and Stone. Wolf and Stone, really, really good. So there's that one. Uh, then the other way to help them out is with uh, Warlord traits to give them a benefit as well. That's to take Saga of the Wolfkin. So your character, whoever he is, will get that. Which is add one to the attacks characteristic. If it was if it charged, was charged, performed heroic intervention. But then the key is to try and get that character to slay uh, a total of five models. In the fight phase, uh, keep a tally from turn to turn. So you can gradually stack it up, but uh, try and get that done. And then, and especially it should be easy if you're going after hordes anyway, you know, something light to try and chew through. Uh, units within six inches then gain that. So they'll get another attack. So you're looking at 50, <laughs> 51 attacks, potentially, you could get out of that unit. And that's just one unit. Imagine if you're able to go for multiple units of these. So I think the key for Space Wolves is just to stack up all of those attacks as much as possible. So I'm trying to show you all, sort of all the little things you can uh, do to try and enhance that. And again, that's just a Warlord trait. You don't pay for that in any points. It's not going to cost you anything in command points. So it's another effective way without damaging your, your pool of command points 
uh, way of getting a load of attacks. So even at unit five, you can chuck out tons of attacks, uh, even if it's been whistled down or it's small in size. Yeah, and other, other common ways of, of using your screening unit, so you charge the screening unit in first, uh, and then that pins the enemy target down, and then your character's able to charge in without suffering any overwatch. So there's that, that whole sort of combination of these two working together, character and screening unit, both helping each other out. So uh, that's the kind of idea I'm going for. And again, unique here, being able to bury a Terminator in there, it just looks so cool. So it's something to consider for sure. Check out the comment section below, see what others have said. Really want to hear from experienced uh, Space Wars players uh, regarding this unit here, any other hidden combinations and clever stuff that you can do, check out to see what other experienced players uh, are saying there in the comments section uh, below this video. And as I said, you can go to the stratagems, but I just know they're not, they're not too amazing really. You can play um, overwhelming and impetuosity here, so it's uh, for blood claws. If they charge, it's reroll your hit rolls. So you have to pay for that. Well, why not just get a, your character in there that grants reroll ones anyway? So uh, that might be useful if you're having to. Uh, no, it's not going to help you because rerolls before modifiers. So you'd rather go for a character that can grant that instead of having to keep paying out command points all the time. So I, I would actually avoid using the stratagems for these because they're all sort of little bonuses. This ability to reroll ones. That's a fun dwarf cavalry. Uh, I would, and you know, tr I would try and save my command points. So I've got ten of them. I'd try and save them for important ones, like cloaked by the storm, majorly important one. That's three command points, and also uh, only in death does duty end. Two command points, uh, and then on of the chapter, fighting again with whatever unit that may be. Three command points. They're the big ones you want to pay out for. I think, instead of whittling your points down by sort of the more minor stratagems. So instead, get your enhancements and relics and warlord traits uh, to buff these up. And when, you, know, you know, you buff a unit of these up to the point where they're the equivalent of two of these units, but you're not having to pay the points for it. So, you know, buffs and bonuses is a great way to, to enhance your army and sort of duplicate it almost to uh, double its effectiveness virtually as we've seen here. All right, so I've uh, got a few scenarios lined up here, just to illustrate here. I might stack, start stacking up the bonuses just to illustrate what you can do. So you're gonna have 15 orc boys here with a knob, and say they're they're at the front line here. They're blocking their they're blocking the way through, and, and you're trying to move forwards. The idea for these infantry is to clear the screens out of the way. Then after that, what happens to these? They're just ready to screen the characters that are behind. Say you're trying to deliver the heavier hitting characters to try and get through to the heavier tanks and, and dreadnoughts and so on, uh, deeper in the enemy lines. So the idea for these is to clear the hordes out of the way. You don't want these kind of units getting bogged down by hordes. So you want the hordes cleared out of the way. And then for these to escort, to escort your character and your harder hitting units uh, through into enemy lines. The heavier stuff starts trying to clear your infantry away, but still you protect them. And then when the points are right, when the, Time's right, you can deliver these in, and then units like this, Murder Fang and Venerable Dreadnoughts, can smash anything to pieces. So that's the kind of idea I'm thinking of. So let's say you've moved in. Standard unit of 10, uh, there is a uh, just a pack leader in there. Nothing else, we'll do no other upgrades at this point. Um, so we'll take it from here. So let's uh, fire our pistols <coughs> just to keep it right. You could throw a frag grenade, but we'll just fire pistols here. So looking for fours, that's a superb round of firepower there. Fours to wound, just might be able to pick off a few of these orc boys. Yeah, I've killed three of them. It's a good start. And then we'll charge in. Five inches will put us in. We'll do the overwatch here from the orcs. They'll throw a stick bomb. Misses. Uh, and then five. 10, 11 shots. 7, 10, 11. Looking for sixes, that'll generate two extra shots, which miss. Falls to wound, and a save, which fails, you lose one. Okay. 
So, uh, I don't have the full amount, but that's just a realistic representation here. So, these guys are cut out. This is their prime. They're outnumbered here, but this is this is what they're designed to do, is to clear away hordes. Uh, so, you've got nine. A normal space range on the charge, nine attacks. These guys with their chainswords, 18 attacks. And then uh, blood claws on the charge, 27 attacks for a, <laughs> for a unit of nine. It's actually going to be 20... Eight attacks because the uh, blood claw pack leader grants you the extra attack. Well, he gets an extra attack. So looking for twos. A fair few ones, but you, the vast majority of your dice are going to come for us. It's very, very reliable close combat here. It's very rare. You're going to roll twelve ones. It just never, just hardly ever happens. So it's exceptionally reliable. So you, look at that, you've plastered these orcs with hits here. Looking for force to wound. Yeah, even this humble squad here without any kind of upgrades or any kind of help. About half have come through. So that's okay. The orcs have saved a few. But look, you've managed to bring down six. Which is alright, but the orcs are going to get to fight back quite effectively here. So... Uh, we'll go for the knob. I play these as goths. Threes to wound. And some saves to make. Bad one. So one of these brought down. And then... Uh, oh boy, I see it. Fifteen attacks. This is the problem. The orcs have survived quite well and they're able to hit back. They won't be as effective, but... You don't really want a, a draw here or something close to that. You want to just just to wipe the whole screen away. Um, but now there's a bit of trouble here for these, and they've lost two more. So they've won that fight, but look, the lines are still drawn here, and the, the fighting's still taking place. So now you're going to get bogged down into a continuing fight. And they've sort of failed in their mission. They haven't cleared this screen out of the way, and that could disrupt your whole battle plan. So, uh, yeah, very impressive number of attacks, but, you know... You, you're going to need lots more than that because you've got to try and get your wounds uh, and your opponent's got to foul the saves. And this is sort of one of the, a bit tougher, but one of the more easier horde type units to clear out the way. So, because they need a six up save. So they need something better than that. Um, so we'll, we'll introduce a few enhancements here. One enhancement could be him. Let's say he's in the squad just quickly. Two attacks, extra one for the weapons uh, and then an extra one on the charge. Uh, it's three hits, threes to wound, re-rollable, they've all wounded, and it's AP minus, it's gone straight through. He's just took down th three more of those, that's a better result, and that's just that Terminator just there. And the, the response from these, they can't get to him, they've got to chew for all of these. So I, I think that's a pretty good upgrade, that, I had to add him in, he's just hacked down three old boys. And you see that could maybe change things around a bit, consolidate around, starting to push those out of the way. Uh, and that could could help out during the game. So it's just an idea, uh, but I think he's useful enough. And for each time that we're going to stack some of these bonuses up, plus one attack, plus one attack, it's all going to be stacked up on top of him. So you're going to become a real beast uh, of attacks coming from him. You know, four or five attacks, crazy, uh, available from him. So let's say uh, we have, we'll reset here. I'm trying to get to the point where a unit of these will burst through and just comfortably clear these out of the way. That's what you want. And that's what's going to terrify the opponent, is when they see large horde units being annihilated. Not not half killed, or a couple of models remaining where there's some fight left, but just blown out of the way. Because the other great thing is, if you can clear the unit out of the way, there's no chance for them to respond and start taking casualties yourself. So, same sized unit. We're going to keep the Terminator in this time. Remember, there's about five left. So, we'll see if we can improve what we have here. So I've actually got a squad of 11 with the Terminator model. So I'll move them in. Same again. Shooting is not going to be much of an improvement. The Terminator's got nothing to fire. So just a squad of 10. So looking for fours. Didn't expect much from the firepower here. Fours to wound. Couple of wounds and brought one of them down. One save on a six, so pretty much the same as last time. Uh, we'll charge in, take Overwatch as well, so stick bomb, four shots, nothing. 
and then 14 shots come from the knobs or from the old boys. Uh, so yeah, some hits, some bonus shots, two more hits, <laughs> balls to wound, just the one wound, and again, foul to save, all right, so we've lost one. So let's say we've got uh, an unnamed character, we'll just use Cromina, his named character, just say you've got a, a wolf lord here, whatever it may be, and he, you've given him the wolf and stone. So yeah, he's kept up with the squad, so their role is to charge him first, to protect him, and then he's going to charge in. And I'll not fight with him, I just want to illustrate just the, the unit itself, so I don't want to make things biased, I'll leave the character out of it, but we're just maintaining uh, that three inches. But let's say uh, we charge in, whatever the charge distance is, six. So in they go. And if your character's back here, uh, then by all means just string a line back to him to make sure you keep that. So that's another trick you can do because you'd rather take the bonus uh, to a degree you sort of have to weigh it up but if he's sort of that kind of distance away then you can play it like that and you'll still get all of them except one fighting so no big deal. But let's say he's, uh, he's here so they can all fight. So now instead of uh, Three attacks on the charge, there are four attacks on the charge now uh, for this squad, and it's going to benefit him as well. So they will see if that tips the scouts. I think this could really help out. And uh, if it's a wolf lord, say it is a wolf lord, we're going to go for the reroll ones as well. All these little things just try and make this as efficient as possible. So the Terminator, for example, two attacks, uh, one on the charge, one for the wolf and stone, uh, and one for his weapons. He's got five attacks now. Twos to hit, rerolling ones. Five hits, threes to wound, re-rolling wounds. Yeah, four orc boys hacked down by that Terminator, and the orc player can't get to him. That's the great thing. So one turn after the next, uh, you can be that kind of effectiveness. So push those out of the way, but he just ripped a chunk out of that orc <laughs> squad just there. So great. Uh, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's actually at 36 attacks. It really is good. Uh, and that becomes 37 attacks because of the squad leader in there as well. So there's 25, 30, we've got 34, so I will roll three more after this because they're all probably going to hit. So you're looking to reroll ones. It's exceptionally reliable, it really is good. So there's all of your hits. Reroll these. All failed apart from two. Uh, so I'll roll three more just to make the numbers up. They've all hit. So uh, 37, 35 hits in total for two that failed. So 37. That's all of these. Yeah, it's 37. Two that failed, 35. So it's a load of. Load of sh it's so looking for fours to wound. This is where you start to lose a load of dice. Um, so there's 34, I'm going to re-roll one of these, just to make the numbers up, okay, so we'll just remove all of the... Now if this was something like Gaunts, Hormagaunts, Termagants, uh, Cultists, you want threes to wound, you get a whole load more wounds, um, but it's fours here, that's the kind of result you want, loads and loads of wounds, take the six up, save, it's a valiant attempt here from the Orcs, of save four, Say five, but that's going to kill off. Fifteen, they're gone, so you've wiped them out. Mission accomplished. So just that one relic, the Wolfenstone, plus a bit of help from a character granted reroll ones. Haven't had to use any stratagems to help out, and you've got yourself an you know, exceptionally uh, reliable amount of hits coming through, and then just plastered the opponent with loads and loads of wounds, uh, and then just blown them away. All for the sake of just taking a useful relic. Uh, then, I'll not roll it up here, but imagine you get the Warlord trait, um, so say it's a Rune Priest charges and he slays five uh, models, and then he unlocks uh, all of those bonus attacks as well, so you really can start to stack things up, and again, without the use of stratagem, so I think that's the effective way to use Space Force uh, as much as possible. So, even a humble unit like this is one of your standard infantry units, but still, uh, with some enhancements, 
uh, you know, you plaster anything with a crazy amount of attacks, you're going to start reducing wounds down. Even vehicles, you start getting loads and loads of five pluses, forcing loads and loads of saves. Uh, they're going to start draining the wounds, even from vehicles as well. And then again, bury a Terminator in there, perhaps with a Thunder Hammer, for example. Uh, and you can start bashing away wounds uh, on <laughs> vehicles as well. So I hope that's helped illustrate how effective this cheap unit can be. You know, at toughness four, three up save, it's a good stat line. The Space Marine stat line, I think, is still good. Get them into cover, uh, either physical cover, or you can use your uh, Rune Priest and his Tempestus here. The Stormcaller has a walk charge value of eight. It's quite hard to make it go off, but if that does uh, manifest, the Psyker and your friendly Space Wars units have been six gain the benefit of being in cover. So you can all of a sudden just give them all a two up save. Um, excellent, so again, another bonus there without the use of stratagems. So I think the key for these, if you're gonna go for them, is to take a good few. I wouldn't invest in like one decent unit of them. I think you need a lot. So I've got sort of, in my new list, uh, one, two, three good sized units of these. So they can, they'll start taking casualties and so on, but it's gonna take a fair bit of effort for the opponent to try and clear all of these away before they can get through to my other units that are behind. And with that amount of attacks, they become a threat to anything. So that's the tactic of them for Blood Claws. And uh, if you're an experienced Space Wars player and there's some other tips and tricks and, and tactics and so on, leave it in the comment section below. If you're new to Space Wars, uh, then check out and see what others have said in the comment section. Uh, but I hope that video has been a help to you. And uh, for more videos, uh, I plan to, once the army's complete and I've finished all the models, this new list that I'm working on, uh, then you'll see uh, a Start Collector video uh, uh, to a degree because I, uh, these have been painted on commission, uh, and then also uh, a complete army video for the Space Wolves uh, just to let you see the whole list. And there'll be a full tactic involving all of the units uh, in that one big video. Then for battle reports, there's some battle reports already for the Space Wolves uh, over on the Plus channel. Uh, the brand new list is proposed on there and you can get involved in the discussion with that uh, and then I plan to make when the new list is finished to put battle reports on both of the channels uh, for everyone to enjoy. But there it is, that's uh, Blood Claws showcase video and tactic here for them. Keep a look out for more tactics videos for the Space Halls. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.